think it was a question you had put in a group me earlier this week about what keeps us from getting to a utopian society. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, or or like what's kinda and Hey shout out Kim for that question. Shout, yeah. shout out Kim. But uh my first thoughts on it was and it, it's you know the cliche capitalism as far as like it it well, it goes to greed. Mm-hmm. And like I feel like you could even like reference like the Edison versus Tesla back in the day, A C versus D C mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. there was one system that could be capitalized on and, and easy made it made it easier for mm-hmm. you know businesses to make money there's another system that was better for people right. it, it would have given free electricity. electricity to everybody and so i think it's just over hundreds of years more examples of of that where like capitalism has kind of or, or the or people wanting to make money has kind of stall technology to actually benefit So do you people. think that it's primarily based off of the idea of capitalism? Uh, I mean, it's, it's to, to me, that's one of the base things. I think there's a lot of effects that come from that, that on the people, you know, but I think a lot of it goes back to capitalism. <clears throat> if, if I was to give my quick uh, perspective on it, I would chalk it up to human nature. Um, I think human nature is always going to prevent a utopian society. Um, you can look at every single different version of societal constructs and government and ruling in which like there is a version for almost every single way in which every single one of those have been overcome with parts of power, greed in which in exploitation. That's fact. Like you can look at literally every single country, countries that have not touched each other, not Pre-colonialism, colonialism, wherever you want to go. Um, it's always been a piece of it. Um, there's a part of human nature where there is this hunger for power. There's a hunger for greed. There's a, um, there's a hung- hunger for a lot of different little pieces in which it doesn't make for a utopian society because of everybody lives the, lives the world inside a first-person view. Um, and most people are trying to do what's best for them in their immediate community um, and not like particularly the world and i look at this as like the answer to world hunger and and shit like that in which i don't think that it's really possible because of the way human nature is set up so you go ahead go ahead i'm gonna say so i mean i get what you say in human nature that mean and like i said there's monarchies where the people live messed up there's communist socialist system with people all all the different systems had, 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 had oppressed people but and especially, in, I'm talking about like in the past, you don't think there was any, you know, quote unquote Wakandas out there where there was lands where people did live in like relative, a relative utopia before? Well, I actually getting... to point it out. I would love, love for you to point out like a sustainable system in which people have lived by for multiple years, like hundreds of years, multiple generations, shit, I put it like that, in which it didn't succumb to the exact same thing that every single human society has. Well, I mean, even in Wakanda, that's, the, that's part of the downfall of Wakanda <laughs> for human nature. But I was just asking, I mean, did you that, know? That's my, that's my opinion. Well, that, I, that's I, my opinion. I was just asking, did you know of any examples? I, I don't. Like, that's, that's where it comes from for me is my, my perspective on um, history. The things that I can research and see and when I take a step back and I'm not looking at like the man in the mountain, the forest and the trees, it's more so like societal from like a sociology, sociological uh, perspective. And you see very similar trends no matter where in the world. Yeah, and you know the crazy thing is like when you when you asked it, I kind of like went, I took it all the way down to even like thinking about animals, like mammals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, it's still the same thing. Yep, it's a hierarchy. It's, it's, still, it's still the same thing. The, 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 the best hierarchy. women or the women want to get the best... You know what I mean? The strongest, male. whatever is male, mm. and then men. You know what I mean? So it literally back to the the bottom, the pure basics. It is not even just human. Uh, the, the human characteristics. It's just it's. A, I don't know what it's, what. It's the way the the world was created, and, yeah. or, or how. Yeah. Well, even if you say like your animalistic nature, your yeah, instincts, or no, I, I agree literally, with that. literally, yeah, I can see it because initially, like if when and I would have went with Johnny, like off the top of the. You know what I mean? Off the top. I would have I called out capitalism. 
because greed is just like you know we can see greed and it's just like one of the most things that's like kind of pointed out and magnified and then it's just like okay well if it wasn't that it still would be something else like it's oh no well capitalism 100%. almost might be the closest to the fairest version of governmental uh ruling that we've seen because of uh communists and socialism has led to the worst di- uh, dictatorship. Well, yeah, it's concentrations mm-hmm. of power. Yes, like yeah. it's a it's a direct concentration, and there's an intentional funneling of power away from the actual people. Yeah, um, I mean, like, whatever version still, of the way that you look at it, it's still it's still like that's still about what's what's going on here too. But I mean, it's still, but I mean, no, nah, I would definitely say that we are way different than a dictator. Oh no 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 no, I wasn't talking about that we're the same okay. as a dictatorship. What I was saying is that it's like you saying like con- concent- concentrations of. Uh, let's say money or or, or uh, resources oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that you know that play out to the detriment of another set uh, another set of people. That's something that goes. I mean, and that's almost something like, yeah, like. Well, I think um, capitalism a- allows the birth of the American dream, in which the dream is that though we know that it's not reality, okay, everybody okay. can make it and get this amount of money. Right? Mm-hmm. If you have the idea, you can do it. Um, that's uh, a false dream to an extent. There is still a piece of that that is true. Mm-hmm. Um, that if you are in, engi- and like if you, if you have a like, there's no caste system in America. Like if you have enough ingenuity, if you work hard enough inside a very concentrated, specific way, there is a way for you to make enough money, right? If you went to school to study engineering and you got your degree in that, and then you know what I mean, like you you pass X Y Z, like you you will get a job that earns high. Enough. Most people don't have like the stick to itness to actually really do it, but there is an actual way in comparison to if we look inside like Indian countries, uh, like where there is a clear caste system in which you kind of can't make it from where you're at, no matter what. Like that just is what mm-hmm. it is. Um, in which the glimmer of hope is ca- capitalism, but we also understand the exploitation that comes with capitalism. Right. Now, it's a question. Uh, do you think that the that uh, a rich person, or the, the, this is a generalization, um, but do you think that the that a rich person is happier than a homeless person? Do I think that a rich? That's a good question. Do I think a rich person is more happier than a homeless person? Hell no. Nah, I you think that it, them, it, you ain't never seen them homeless motherfuckers on South Boulevard dancing off their shit, bro. They be happy as hell. Bro, they, <laughs> I, I literally watch, I watch and see, uh, you know, I, it's a lot of homelessness mm-hmm. around uh, the area where I live. And it's like, yeah, I, I can see like that the struggle, but they seem, and I've actually talked to some of them. You're probably actually right. I, I, I've actually talked to them because like, I'm the type of person, I think you can get a, a, a gym from anybody. And and I ain't too far removed from you know what I mean the 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 community which you know what I mean I ain't too far removed so like I can literally you know what oh, I mean I, I don't help the person that like they're literally in my opinion the motherfuckers happier than I am well but, fuck but, the rich person with like I'm not rich but I'm just like looking at them and like like the days that I see them like yeah you may see they ain't got the clothes and all of this stuff that we sit there and try to put value on but but that, I, I so I I think that. To go go to what you're saying, I think what it probably is is something that we speaked about earlier, and it's the pressure to live up to expectation, mm-hmm. in which a homeless person knows how to survive, so that's not a worry, and they have no expectations that they have to live up to. So now, like you, 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 you base everything of your happiness probably on a dream and the ability to survive the next day, in which as long as you you did what you needed to do, there's a homeostasis to that. Um, but if you are rich and whatever, there is a lot of the the anxiety that comes with if I lose this, if I make this next wrong step, um, what would it what it would look like if I actually come from the, off this pedestal and I'm back here with the commenter, X Y and Z, in which you see the go back to the previous conversation, you see the Wall Street niggas committing suicide mm-hmm. when they done really kind of. You know what I mean? Lost an ass little money off a bad trade over on Wall Street. Sure. Because of now, I'm not able to actually live up to these expectations that in which I've put upon my life and I cannot achieve. And for me, that's such a heavy blow to my ego that shit, anything is better than this. Yeah, I think that like, like 
that's why like I ain't the type of person to care like I don't oh I want to be rich and all this type of, I, know, I just want time. You know what I mean? I want to be able to 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 I don't fuck the damn million dollar crib set. You know what I mean? I don't really care about that type of stuff. Like mm -hmm. the the ability to have, especially when you got kids and shit. You know what I mean? Because people think that like oh I can get more money and then that means that I can buy this lifestyle for them, bro. That it, that that lifestyle for them is not going. That ain't gonna mean nothing. The only thing to me, I think, is what it is. You, when you have, then you you value people knowing that you have, and mm -hmm. that's what we're literally like living out. And it's oh like, no, for sure. I think that that's there. There's way more pressure that comes with being and living at a certain standard, and the anxiety that comes with that is immense as well. It's the beauty about living under your means too. Beautiful thing. As I think that uh, Rail Rail has a, he has a, a quotable. He says it's not about paper; it's about position. There you go. It's not about paper; it's about position. Uh, before we, before we switch, I'm gonna have quick. to shirt that motherfucker. Shirt that. <laughs> Listen, there, there's um, what is it? The Q wants this Q wants shirts coming too. Don't worry. But all right, so um, before before we uh <laughs> before we before we move on, I I I do think that so we we got we got two people inside the. Inside the audience, in which I would I would say, do y'all believe that a utopian society is an achievable goal? At this particular moment, no. I think that the human species has to like advance a lot further in technology, um, like just across the board for something for even that to be something that's even slightly achievable. Um, that's and that that's like that's more so aimed at like material things so like a decent place to live food clean drinking water like something that gives you purpose in life but like a utopia in and of itself is impossible because that means that everybody is completely happy with where they're at and most people are not like you don't get the 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 woman that you want or the man that you want or the job that you want or you can't do something because it, like it's your so you're so I, I got a question for you. Do you think that the issue is that people are unaccepting of being like happy with where they are, or and to me this is the big or the fact that people want to be on a higher step than the next man. Well, and I think that that's the major thing is that human, most people don't want to be even with everybody, right? Human niggas human. want they bragging rights. Niggas want to shine on the nigga. Niggas niggas want to be like a step above. No, for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, human nature in and of itself, it's we competitive. We make we we make ourselves into hierarchies. So yep, it's like we I would, and that's the kind of piece that I was talking about with like technology. So like, like. The, that whole Matrix Terminator artificial intelligence type of thing kind of take some of those major things out of the control of people as far as like to make things more equi equitable across the board. Like that would be a, a good piece of it. But like, yeah, we, we, we like, yeah, like you said, people want to shine on niggas and, and like I can do more than you. I have more than you. I'm better than this you. This nigga said leave it up to Sophia, bro. I just thought about uh, our robot. That's going to be a right. dystopian. And it, but no, it, it's a, I mean, it's, be in the. I mean, I obviously not like a Terminator that's going to like take machine guns oh, to the street. Oh, you or want like you that. want? Oh, no, listen, not like that. I am. I'm. I'm. Listen, put me on record. Where my camera? At? <laughs> put me on record. <laughs> I believe that there should be legislation for automation. I'm oh, there. absolutely. For I, I, I think that automation is going to be the next cause of the. Like the whatever the depression. biggest like revolt X Y and Z that comes mm. up, I think that automation is it because it's going to unemploy mass people, in which then they're left to deal with reality. What was the, if uh, there's the not Asian like a dude. heavy level of a universal basic income? Andrew in, Yang. And yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. In, in which everybody is able to live inside that capacity. Automation is going to make it to where a revolt is coming. That's a fact. Um, and. Capitalism is not going to be a, a achievable ideology because of the means of production and everything is going to be cheaper because you can get a robot to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so put me on the record and say, I if I if I ran if I ran, I'm, I'm a part of Johnny. Uh, what is it? Twenty 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 four. I'm a part of uh, Vice President. Me. I'm, I'm talking about 
we are I, I'm I'm completely for legislating automation. We need people to do the jobs. No, um sure. yeah, to some degree I can agree with that, but at the same time, like if we're talking about a utopian society, mm-hmm. I think the main thing holding us back from having a, a utopian society is the fact that we are in a capitalistic system. Like th- like the same thing y'all talking about as far as like people trying to shine and everything, all this has to do with capitalism. It all comes down to making money and everything. If everybody wasn't chasing after money, they'd be chasing after what they want. I think, That's it's, I but but most people want to be better than the next man, though. I mean, so but like, what's, so what's if you look at so, like doing, soci- what makes you happy? But you, but that's not true though. Because like, if you look at socialism, ideals. you look at communism. Because both of those will be like the other version of like if we sat and had like these deep theoretical conversations, and we talk about like what governmental system that we believe would most happen uh, to be the better for the betterment of the black community or the, or the world in general. You end up going into like even a socialistic uh, approach or a communistic approach. And again, society has proved that there is a struggle for that to work because of the concentration of power. It just is what it is. Yeah, like, and cap- is, it, and, and it cap- would have to be like a hybrid. Like you got to take something, and that's the yes. you got to take something from everything to kind of. You know yeah. I mean, it would be the rethinking of with the idea of utop- utopia being the actual goal, yeah. which I don't think that that because, neither one of these joints was actually. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thoroughly, I, you know, magnified trying to actually become a utopian success. I don't think that that was even the end goal. Yeah. Of, of any. But I was gonna say, only thing you got to worry about with capitalism. Is as far as like I think where we're at today, uh, there is a concentration of power within capitalism because mm-hmm. when you have people like Elon Musk with two hundred billion dollars, if we're in a capitalistic society, somebody being that rich is a concentration of power. Bill Gates owning all the well, farms. Well, I mean, I, I, right. but, 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 but that's loose. If we talk about that and then in comparison to China. And we talk about that, and then in comparison yeah. to Russia, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, not I, like, like I'm, I'm not comparing it. I'm not comparing it power, to like I'm not comparing difference. it to actual socialistic systems. I'm exactly. saying as far as when it comes to oh, capitalism, well, then I agree. Then. The, yes. what, what we need to get back more to is more of a free market, less monopoly, less you know people being able to buy up like a like a Bill Gates being able to buy up all the fucking farmland mm-hmm. in the Midwest. We have to get away from that where there needs to be more of a socialistic regulation to the capitalism. But I think or, or I agree with free market society. When the people came over here to America, they had a farm, they had a couple pigs and they was going to work Niggas with want to shine on the other farm though. That's what it is, bro. They hey, want well, their plantation to be a little bit bigger. Well, get some hey, get some more pigs. <laughs> um I think that this pushes us to like a um a good space where to me when I hear about this a lot of it hinges on the balance of morality right in which like there's the personal morality that you have and then the societal morality and what's best for everybody and that's typically where the conflict comes in it so i want to i want to start like funneling it into a like a, a more nuanced way now and i want to talk about the nuance of what we think is best for black culture as it pertains to um morality and if like the moral good is better for for uh black people or the um societal capitalistic uh um advancement is better for black people the key ones. No. Um, but does that did I frame that? No, I got, yeah, right. no, I know what you Johnny, let, let, let me hear what you got to think. Shoot, man. Listen, I'm gonna also say I'm wearing this shirt for a reason. Man, man, I'm wearing this shirt for a reason. Flex on them. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Johnny. We are gonna get to it later. Go ahead, Johnny. What you what you doing? You celebrating? Yeah, from the celebration <laughs> bowl. Yeah. Celebration. Um, I think that there, there's an example in this for me to point out from this shirt. But I'm gonna let you go, Johnny. Oh, uh. So you, you, you're going to love this answer there. Uh-oh. Uh You're going to love this answer. But when it comes to, like, black people and we're talking about, like, what's best for us, I don't think we should be worried about morality all that much. We just need to be worried about money and getting and acquiring power because we, we live in a country where the people who rule over this country and who's had sovereignty over us, who owned us, they didn't necessarily give a damn about 
morality. They gave a damn about morality within their little bubble, but at the end of the day, it was about getting money. It was about acquiring capital. It was about getting the resources to be able to build a society and build mm. your, your culture out. So I don't think, you know, morality is one of those places where I think we we, we we get lost in the sauce and there's a way everybody can have different morality, but when it comes to a culture, it's got to be about that bag. Yeah, everybody for sale. What you say? What you hey, say, Johnny? You, Not Johnny, uh, Royal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I ain't the, uh, I always, even the most of talk about that for sale shit. For sale. That nigga's Johnny for sale. sale. You not for sale? Johnny for sale. I ain't for sale, bro. Johnny for sale is t-shirts. Yeah. He need, he need to go ahead and start. Hey. Goddamn for sale. Dollar yeah. sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. Hey. 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 Nah. <laughs> dollar <laughs> sign. Shoot. Shoot. I'm trying to... Uh, Cause I think that I'm saying, but but but, day, but, how, but how is morality gonna help us as people when we're living in a capitalistic society and you need right. bread? Right, right, right. I but right. at you, the end of the day, all a, it is is like a, it's it's a collective. It's a collective that's missing. So, like, if you trying to get your own dollar just for your shit, and he trying to get his own dollar just for him, and and what did that do? We gonna talk? Oh yeah, we're gonna build generational wealth, and then what? Your family just does everything by themselves. By themselves. That but doesn't then, help but then, anything. But then we sit and and and, and gawk at. Oh, we'll build what, 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 we got what, another what, millionaire, what, another what, black millionaire. No, no, like so. Then we gawk at what the hurricanes do, and be like, oh, they have. Control over this industry and that industry and those industries. You think there's a lot of morality over there? I think there? that there is a collective intentionality. Mm. But it's not. Like, mor- there's no morality there. No, there is a morality to lift up the, the, the other, co- the, the entire community. Yeah. And the thing is that, like, it's it's so interesting the fact that like we want to play a game that has never what? benefited us. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not a space in America that this has benefited us. Like, and we see every other community do the exact opposite and benefit and, and grow. murdering the game. And it's like, my bad, because I'm about to get hyped for a second. But yeah, you, you there, though. I, yeah, yeah. You, you but there. but the, the issue is the fact that, like, we as black people get sold the dream of the American dream and we fall for it like dumbasses all the time. Um, in which, you, we can look at the Asian community, group economics. We can look at Hispanics. Group economics. Fact. We can look at the uh, Africans. Group economics. The blueprint is there. It's not even like a fallacy. It's the fact that we fall for the exact same trap every single time. You know the worst part about it too? Is that they're literally right beside us. Right beside. We literally can watch them do the shit the entire time. Like, nigga, I'm sitting here watching the Hispanics take over the whole... Hidden Valley is the biggest neighborhood in the in, in Charlotte. They own damn near the whole neighborhood. So just think about the fact that, okay, so the, they own this. We, we already know the value of that neighborhood because of its uh, uh, location to 8577, the hospital. You know what I mean? It's just everything is right there. So mm-hmm. we literally just gave them all of our fu- – we, well, we sold them. or And they also got a lot of the uh, foreclosures. We literally just gifted them so much wealth. And then what do you think they do? They ain't do nothing but buy all of them little uh on North Trying, all of them business parks, yep. all of that shit right there. They got their clubs, they food, they got everything yep. there, uh uh tax filing, all of that shit. They just pretty much made that Preach. their their area. So we sitting here while, oh yeah, we ready to just move out over to this this neighborhood all on the outskirts. They're trying to blend in with them white folks. They're trying to blend in with them. be accepted. Hold on, hold on. Like, bro, hold on, hold on. You had a hold on, whole community, on, hold on, bro. Hold on, 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 hold on. So, Ching so, 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 you saying group economic group economics equals morality? No, what we saying because is that, we talk about more. When I think about morality, I think about church and like no, they're, they're going too far. They're, they're, they're totally different. No, than, no, no. Morality amongst each other. The community morality that's going that it takes. To not exploit each other. And exactly. Build up. To and the so, fact that I want to work with you. I want me, we gonna work with you to get you from this place to this place, knowing that when you get there, you're gonna bring me and mine up to that place too, so that I can do that for the next person and we can continuously. That's just smart business. I don't think that has that, that's, uh, that's that's a, a side more, from, and, and again, more, more morality. And I think that again, black people have never been offended from that. Hispanics ain't, but they've learned what the loophole is. Asians ain't, but they've learned what the loophole is. Again, I, I can start going. Ethiopians ain't, but they learn what the loophole is. Like we we can go and look at how every single other demographic has taken over a market share of a uh, industry in which brings in money, and how they did it. 
guess how it wasn't done selfishly. Yeah. Guess how it wasn't done like like spiting the next man to look just like them. Mm. It ain't never worked that way. Why for black people we think that's the way to do it? And the funny thing is that you know who else don't do it? Them pale skinned people. They ain't did it that way either. The facts. Why why do we think that this would somehow be the way that black people should do it when it's literally not worked for us? It ain't been a time that we played that pale game that has worked for us. But you just said them other people coming over here playing the game. If we get group No, no, they, they, they play the game, game. economics. Yeah. Yeah. They play a, di- yeah. a completely different game. And we see it's like literally they right beside Show us. Show me the community the part, they did it then. This the part that, that's the part that kills me. Like I'm literally watching and then we make the jokes about them. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they all the Mexicans live in one house. Okay, but then they did live together. Now they bought seven. Mm-hmm. I was looking, I was I was listening to look watching this Hispanic dude walk down my street and he was pointing at houses. Just pointing. Kept walking down. He was talking to some dude. You know what I mean? He had another Hispanic with him. And he was just walking down the street pointing at him. And then I was thinking, like, dog, he pointing at all of the houses that they own on the block. Mm-hmm. Literally just showing them. Like, yep, that one, that one. He going across the street with the shit on both sides of the street. I'm just like, bro, man. No, I mean, like we, I say, I, I, yeah. y'all argue, y'all make when I seem like morality. And I say get the bag up. Which when I say get the bag, that's what I'm talking about is group economics. But no, you, but but like there's a so when I say get the ability the to focus on my bad. capitalism, we don't have to exploit each other. But white people made their money by exploiting black people. And there was no what we morality. Can't look like, is there morality within the black culture? That's why it was a nuance. We didn't just like throw this out randomly and crazy. Morality within the black culture, and are we exploiting ourselves to benefit a dollar? And to me, this is where now we, we start shifting into this idea of like, I said, I'm wearing this for a reason. We can talk about uh, the Celebration Bowl. <laughs> we can talk about Dion and mm-hmm. where the big divide at came from where mm-hmm. like it was a controversial subject. Why was it controversial? It's because of the split between morality and, and the bag. And the bag. The facts. The people that justified the move was all about the, the bag. bag. And selfish uh, benefits. In comparison to like the agreements and the statements that you said that was looking to lift up a community in which we looked at you to, to be genuine about. Mm-hmm. And that's where the entire grievance of the whole thing comes in. And you could just think about what what is that? Even though, and, I, and, I, and at the end of the day, I, Charlemagne whole thing was like, you just talking about one man. You just talking about one man. At the end of the day, we all have a part to play within this. Back. You, yeah, you one Back. person and you one person, but you're fucking literally the the like what uh, uh, Tupac said. I ain't gonna be the person that's gonna change the world, but I'm gonna spark the mind that's gonna change it. So like, if everybody want to go and do their own thing and then just be looking at everybody else, like, bro, you ain't doing nothing, bro. Mm-hmm. You talking about running up a bag, bro? What the fuck is the point of the bag if you ain't got nobody with you that you can love and people around you that you, you know what I mean? Bringing the community up, like what? Okay, you just got a bunch of money, and then what? And and it just, I think that the other piece of it is that here's the reality, right? As black people, if we're actually going to progress, there's going to have to be selfless people within it, and the people that have, we have to eventually. We look at like the HBCU structure, mm-hmm. look at the black community structure as a whole. Um, we have to have people that are selflessly investing into our institutions. And structures to actually build up the power of the black dollar, the power of wealth. Like it just is what it is. We yeah. we're, we're we're never going to have the endowments of a Princeton, of a PWI, a UNC, a South Carolina. It's never going to happen. Yeah. And like black wealth, black wealth statistics in itself denotes that. Like yeah, so, no, bro. We got to start, and this is something that, like, I think that this is this is a, a, a where we start at. Is start donating to the the institution. Like, mm. stop fucking complaining all the time. If you not, bro, just twenty five dollars, twenty dollars, bro. If you and I think I think that that's fair. That, but I think that that's that's one of those Charlemagne points that I, I he he really kind of like ticked me off on, only because of no. You talking about in you talking about in uh, uh, against the. Um, my, your boy shit. Yeah. Oh no no I ain't I ain't even oh, talking no, about no, for sure. like, like if the general at statement at is everybody try yes but I, yeah. but this is what I would say is that the average graduate from an HBCU um, is not making a bunch of money yeah. and this is coming from like I got a bunch of HBCU graduates in here right now in which 
we can have the conversation and we can speak about typically, like when you're coming out, you, you're coming out with student debt yeah. and you're trying to find a way inside a career path mm-hmm. in which like now and I'm starting to get inside like the footing in which I can donate back to my uh, university. Yeah. But it, it, that, that in itself was a 10 year track in which like really getting stable inside enough footing to where I can like handle all my personal business and have the wherewithal to actually really invest back into my mm-hmm. my in- institution, in which that's one of those capitalistic blinded uh, points, in which that's easy to say. But the thing is that if we look at the uh, what what is the, what is the word the GDP of people that is actually coming out of HBCUs, it is not in comparison. To that of a PWI. So it's facts. always going to be different. But then guess what? There's a huge scale that is completely different when you look at what their uh, what their sports bring in. Mm-hmm. And how that funds everything inside the, the university. For sure. That's millions on millions on millions as well. Like it, it, it's a different and completely different bag. And a different game that, that's being played. That it is crazy to put that on the average student. That is yeah. still struggling to literally... Pay back their student loans. And that was the importance of uh, Dion. Right. That was the importance yes. of that move that he made. Because, like, literally, okay, so now we talking about we niggas is on, on the TV now. Like, mm-hmm. you messing around and be able to mm-hmm. get. So that's yes. bread. Yes. You literally yes. were yes. not even that you had to, like, actually pay anything. Your your presence mm-hmm. was a contribution that we we that was necessary. Yeah, you stepped that out necessary. a couple years. You see the progression in the university. Yeah, the facts. In the so, so, so we gonna stop watching HBCUs now that Dion's I, I, on. I, I don't because I went to one, so I go. I go there. I go to the yeah. games. I pay the admission for the games. So, like, like for me, no. But when we talk Damn. about like what 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 it actually like looks like full circle, like how many of y'all went to a UNC game? But do you watch it on TV? And that goes to what Rare was just saying, that them contracts. Those different little pieces to the puzzle. The ability to attract that high Travis Hunter. Yeah, and even think about it, even the lower level. Like, how many people want to go to their high school and get in the game free versus shoot the bread that's going to? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, and, and it's this, just about, yeah, like. But, like, I, but I'll give you this. And this is mm-hmm. uh, shout out to Terry. Terry, you playing in the drum line, play drums. And uh, Terry played where? He played a century. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Terry Crumpler. And he said this, and this stuck to me years, 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 years ago. Right? And this is when I was still, like, figuring it out. And, like, he got a degree in which, like, he was able to be gainfully employed mm-hmm. early. And I was like, damn. Because I, I just snuck in through the back of the drum, band room and shit like that. I was like, yeah. damn, did you get it? You, you got in free? Da, 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 da. He said, no. Once I was gainfully employed, I felt that it was my duty to pay. Mm-hmm. Thing is that in the with our community in general, how many people are gainfully employed in a space in which they feel comfortable enough to where it's not a hit to their pocket to pay? And then especially when you benefited off of said organization, and that actually mm-hmm. you can you mm-hmm. know you benefited off of it, and you can see the trajectory that you had different than the people that were in your community that didn't actually do said thing. Right. And then you don't want to, you know what I mean, get mm-hmm. back to that thing. Nah, bro, we got to do better. I'm on my Nipsey hustle. I'm proud to pay right now. Yeah, nah, for sure. Home, and I was, I'm gonna pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's so crazy because we actually talk so about pay. it. We sit and talk about it like, nigga, you paid to get in here. You know well, what I mean? Like, why you? you but paid? it come from a scarcity mindset. Yeah. And and that's but but that's why I can't I can't let that that point sit mm-hmm. because I also still I, I came from that part too where mm-hmm. I understood the thinking of it. Yeah. It's the fact that like shit. I like truthfully transparent space. I remember it was a homecoming. I gave plasma to make it up to homecoming mm. to go do some shit and actually have a decent enough time. Yeah. So at that point, I'm trying to like hustle my way into the game. For sure. Just so I can do some shit and look like a regular human being around my peers and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, so you take that and then, yes, years years down the line, I'm at a space where I'm, I'm cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm straight. In which I can gainfully do that. And it's not even an issue and a, a problem and whatever, whatever. And like that's also always the part, and this is why I like so in general, like I like I said, I, I try and see enough parts of the whole pie, and don't forget where I come from. Yeah, where I remember being that part person, so it's hard for me to castigate 
that idea because I know what it stems from. And it's not even like a specifically negligent space. Yeah. It's just a, a scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dang. Yeah, that was hard. That was hard. Because I Johnny, remember I, me doing it too. I remember me, you know what I mean, going to the homecoming, just, you know what I mean, just walking in with the band because I knew I could. At the end of the day, like you say, it was from scarcity because I at, the, at that point, I could have afford to pay. Mm-hmm. I could afford to pay. I just never, it never clicked it. Like now you actually can afford to pay. So yep. do it the way that you should in the position that you're in, not mm-hmm. what you were used to. Yep. So yeah, nah, shit. Johnny P. I guess we'll leave you. Leave we'll we'll leave you with the last word. That, Johnny, don't back down. We know that more that morality. Like I said, that, there's a there's a lot of non morality going out there on the world, and there's a lot of rich people without morals. So yeah. I don't think we, we have got to. We ain't got to match that energy though, and it ain't facts. gonna be productive for us to match it. Not as, not as individuals. That ain't our and game that's to the play. thing. It's yeah. And that's why, like, when Umar said, like, owning nah, our music. Speak mu- to that camera right there. Owning our Talk music. Talk to them niggas. Owning our music. Owning our, uh, uh, what do you say? Owning the music. Owning the inventions. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That, and I mean, it's it sounds like a, a grand fuck. It, like, like, that's out of reach. But at the end of the day, no, it ain't out of reach. Speaking of Umar, and we giving out lashes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he killed with that shit. He started talking about lashes. I said, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. That man said, how many lashes do Dion need? <laughs> what did he say? About 50,000? Sheesh. <laughs> Sheesh. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to throw to Johnny. Maybe it's, it's, is, it, uh, is it time to, uh, to, to wrap it up? Uh, Johnny, yeah. I, I think. I think this might even be a, a, a good little space where what do y'all think about doing a, a year in wrap up? We we kinda like dwindling down the year. Got a few um, more days left. A little space yeah. of like reflection. A year in wrap up, a year in positive takeaway. I guess we'll do a little positive takeaway slash year in review. Okay. Um uh, twenty two's been a year. Yeah. Uh it's 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 been a year. It's been a good year for me. She uh, blew by. Say what? Oh yeah, no, nah, I definitely flew by. Flew. It was a little slow period in there, but nah, the, the, for for me, definitely like the end of the year was pretty unex. You know, uh, I did a lot of things I ain't necessarily had planned going into the year, which is uh, it's always nice to you like to have stuff planned, but it's also good to be a little flexible and mm-hmm. find. Uh, you never know what kind of things you'll discover. You just kind of let yourself be be open in the pod. That's definitely one of them. I ain't mm-hmm. never, you know, I ain't never think to let's, you know, let's do a let's do a podcast. But I mean, it came together pretty pretty cool. It's definitely let me uh, work on. That's a lie. You had a whole live podcast before this. You thought about doing a pod. You not had one, but I mean, it wasn't. Like, I ain't never think about doing one here. And <laughs> that was <amazing. laughs> Yeah, my yeah. bad, you just do. Oh, my bad, I just had to call Cap on that. Well, no, I, I ain't had that this year. That was twenty one. <laughs> well, that, 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 that was twenty twenty one. That was twenty twenty one. Uh, but it's just it helps you. It helps you get your mind. You know, as Not far bad. as it helps you keep keep you sharp. You be it's different things you think you see through the week that you like. Oh man, I could speak on that when stuff yeah. happens. You're like, okay, I know we gonna. Probably get to speak on that. So it helps you just kind of formulate your thoughts. Even when you're speaking with other people, there's stuff mm-hmm. that I've heard y'all say that I've went to work or been around other homies and then took y'all's side of the mm-hmm. situation and been like, well, actually, you got to look at it like this, this. And so it's been it's been a decent year. Uh, we just got back from a you know year-end cabin trip, which was pretty lit. That was a good time, good people. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, that's all I really got, man. I had a pretty. What's pretty your good outlook for twenty twenty three? I just want to keep on progressing for mm-hmm. sure. Like I just want to, you know, hopefully there's things in twenty twenty three that I learned that I get better at, and there's no like one particular thing right now that I have yeah. set, you know, on my you know list right now. I still got a couple weeks to kind of figure that out, but uh, definitely want to you know keep on growing. I want to <laughs> see. You know what what we can do with the pod, what other kind of guests we can get on, mm-hmm. uh, different perspectives like that. So, um, no, nah, I said I had a good year for sure. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, I I would say uh, twenty twenty two. I think overall this has been a fairly positive year. Um, I think that I've achieved some goals that are are 
kind of definitely in the progression of where I want to be at. Um, not had as many setbacks. Um, yeah, I, I'm fairly happy. Fairly happy with 2022. I've actually been able to uh, uh, kind of return back to a creative space in which I've been itching for. Um, shout out to y'all two brothers as well, in which has allowed that. Um, and... Yeah, like I, I like I said, I, I think that most things that I've set out to accomplish this year, all in all, has been well. I think that this has been a good year. If I was to say, like, this has been the best year since probably 2020 when, like, I bought, like, my house and different shit like that, in which I have, re like, achieved a lot of, like, those major milestones. I think this year is right next to that in the sense of, like, being able to achieve like specific goals and different things that I've set out to. Um, there are a few things that I haven't been able to make complete time for and which next year are really on like the, the forefront that I want to be intentional about. Um, there's like a couple of different little like ideas, business ideas, different shit like that, that I want to actually be intentional about executing. So as I look forward to uh, 2023, I think that for me, I want to make this year about executing, um, executing on the pod, executing. I think that th there's <clears throat> immense potential with what we're doing. I think now that we have figured out like a, a bit of a structure and process, we got to exploit that and we got to really, really push and really get it out there to where like we can really grow and set obtainable goals and achieve those. And I think that that's very achievable. Uh, very achievable for us is just a matter of doing it. So that's one of those things that I have for us um, in general. When it comes down to uh, as a pod, um, like I said, I have like different ideas in the in the financial sector that I'm I'm trying to achieve. I have different things inside like the business sector that I'm trying to achieve. Um, but I'm very optimistic about 2023. Um, and this year and what we've been able to build has been like a foundation of that. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's my year and wrap up. Mm. I guess for me, hell, 22 has been turmoil. It's been a lot of turmoil mm. for me personally. Um, the pod definitely, uh, has given me a, um, a good bit of a release. You know what I mean? It's, it's therapeutic as we were saying earlier. Um, I appreciate it, and, and it's dope to like. Uh, it's different. It's different when you when you're like kind of just having like, like you know, just conversation amongst just you know just, just off mic and off camera where you can go back and like actually see and and listen to yourself and listen to uh the way that you uh you know it's, come across. it's yeah, the way you come across it and like you, you, you kinda would have like a general notice of how you feel about things, but if you don't sit like actually sit down and see a back and forth and, and how you kinda put together the way that you think, um, you you may not really grasp the entire picture of where your mindset is really re where it really is. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> and uh I'm grateful for the fact that like I I've I've found things and character traits within myself that I can see aren't necessarily good. I found some that are, that I actually like and love about myself. And like the pod and being on camera literally allows for you to have a real uh, basis for the way that you articulate and where you're like the way that you kind of put things together. And um, so I, I definitely appreciate it. And then the dopest thing about the pod to me is that it's, it's vulnerable. I just think that, that that's, it's productive for me. But it's also productive for our community at large, and that's what. What was the word you said? You said it's what? Um, uh, vulnerable. Vulnerable. Okay, I got. It. Um, and and that's something that like, yeah, I really I like that I, I I try to I try to be as vulnerable as I can just because I know that we lack that and honesty and vulnerability. Uh, for us, it's not something that we kind of, you know, hang our hats on as a community most times. So. Um, I think that's a beautiful yeah, place. That I, yeah, for sure. I think that's a beautiful uh, part of what we what we're trying to do. Um, yeah, I say like for twenty twenty three, and then and at the end of twenty two too, I'm a, I, I'm very appreciative uh, for the site and the and the focus and the actual 
uh, <clears throat> I want to say the um, giving me uh, something to look forward to. I wouldn't say that like coming into 22, I had anything really like, you know what I mean? Oh, my son was born in 22. So that was something that I looked forward to. That was at the top of 22. And, um, but like, I, I'm, I'm actually excited to see what next year holds. Cause I found the new uh, understanding, uh, within this year of myself and like my position and where I want to be. And just kind of, you know what I mean? I, I found a lot out about myself and, and my position, um, that I think is going to make out to be, to make 2023 a, a, a very uh, great year of in, intentionality and um, and purpose. And, um, yeah, just, yeah, bro, this is, we, I think that a big thing is, man, to find purpose outside of responsibility. Um, but then I, I, I throw that to happiness. Yeah. And what that feels like for you specifically. Mm-hmm. And I would even say, like so, what I do every year, um, if you, if anybody has the ability to do it, I, I challenge them to do it. Um, but if you're not, whatever, like just kind of find like those moments. Everybody got PTO, but literally my end of the year, like I, I don't go back to work till like January third. So like I'm kind of in here. And I've did this for probably like the past six years, six seven years. Mm-hmm. Um, in which I take the last three years of the month off. I mean, three get three weeks. three weeks of the month of December off and that's kind of like my regroup moment. I recharge, mm-hmm. I kind of get myself reset and I, you know what I mean, decompress and there's parts where you got to sit and deal with yourself. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing like being bored because being bored reflects yourself to yourself and you got to really find out what makes you happy and then you got to find a way to achieve and do that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, or like free time. That's the same thing as being bored. Like you're bored when you have free time with nothing to do with it. Um, and that's something to kind of like sit and sit and think through. I know like every year I have like that moment of reflection that I try and like be intentional about over the span in which I reset. Hey, what makes me happy? What are you trying to accomplish this next year? What did you do this last year? Um, I forget last last pop we had another word for it, but it's like that self, self, self audit, self audit. Mm-hmm. But like this is in real time, this is my self audit moment, and I make sure I self audit during this moment. I I employ all, all all y'all to do the exact same thing. Um, self audit, bro. January first is coming. Don't make them New Year's resolutions just some bullshit for Instagram. Yeah. And I stopped doing them shit so a while ago. I can't remember the last time I actually had like a New Year's resolution. Because do you put, do you put goals for the year though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's never like I, what I need to do is start doing more short term goals. That's where I, uh, mm-hmm. that's where I'm lacking, and that's why I find myself becoming more stagnant because of those short term goals. I need mm-hmm. to start to uh, place those in, and and actually, and see, this is the worst thing too. It's like even if I do do it, and this is why I stopped. It's because it was like. Okay, I never value checking the box. It's just the next box. So I never give myself love and appreciation for checking that box before looking at the next one. It's literally just, okay, bombed in box. Like going from one to the next, and it's like, but you did do that. That's a whole live topic in itself. I think, I don't think that you're the only one that struggles with that. I remember when... I got my current job, and it was from, like, my past previous job. Mm -hmm. And the jump in pay was heavy. Like, it was definitely a big jump in pay. Mm -hmm. And immediately, like, naturally, the version of me before would have felt like, oh, you should be happy and, and like, ah. Mm -hmm. But all that happened when that happened was, like, damn, all right, this is what that does. I got to find the next thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, like, an appreciation of, like, damn. I didn't made it. I didn't did this. I didn't achieve this. I didn't check the box. It was now. All right, what's the next box? We got. We got. I see everything around me. Like, what's next? I got. I got to figure this out. In which I didn't necessarily bask in that appreciation of checking the box. Yeah, and I guess for me, it's got to be thing because I don't really care. But like, even when I when I went back to my current uh, organization, like that was a nice jump in pay, and. I don't really care about that part. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. really for me, like, and maybe I do need to start caring more about, like, and seeing, like, that that is a 
You know what I mean? That that is something to hang your head on. The fact that you're able to be in a traditional relationship and take care of the family. I don't look at that as like a, you know what I mean? Like well, a, you know what I mean? A thing. So like, it doesn't, it just feels like, okay, this is just some more responsibility that I just placed on and I just got to keep, you know what I mean? So I, I, I literally got to find, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I'm thinking about it going into next year, just finding yeah. the things that I do appreciate um outside of responsibility because those things are always going to be there and if i don't have like you said pto just using pto for your birthday and days that you take off you know what i mean that ain't you got to be more planned you got to have more of a plan for things than um you know i mean just because you get caught up going and going with the flow and you have nothing to look forward to so i I would agree with you got to definitely um be more intentional be more intentional yeah it's a fact and um i guess i'll finish this with like like it was a conversation that I had with you, and I think that it's fair enough to have it on uh on air in which um there there is spaces in which like even your achievements are really uh really well, and this is almost like like a way to bring the the whole pod full circle where uh like i as I was telling you this was like an off camera conversation, but um we was having a conversation where we were speaking about like boom. With me, I'm an outlier in the fact that I, I grew up inside a two-parent household in which inside instances, my father was a traditionally providing man, right? And I've seen that family structure, and typically most people that was around me um, didn't see that in general. And I was like that version of that thing for uh, a community to mm-hmm. an extent, right? And then... I had the and I, I was speaking to rail in which I was trying to put in perspective. Hey, also understand that there's a space in which you are that for your community, in which like if you do a 360 spin and look around at everybody that's around you, and then you sit and ask yourself, damn, who all has the ability, who all has the want, and who all is doing this thing of providing at like you, you're traditionally providing mail that provides for a household of four and like like you handle all those responsibilities. That is actually a badge of honor to hang your hat on because of, again, this is not a thing that you see and th- this is the actual outlier. Mm. Like there's not a bunch of guys, there's a bunch of guys that say they want to do this or if this wasn't, but that's the thing that you're doing. Um, in which there's, a proud moment to be able to say, Hey, that's a real accomplishment that I'm actually doing. There's responsibilities and different things that we've talked through that comes with that. But Mm -hmm. that is the box that's checked that you can sit and take a step back and appreciate. Still learning it, bro. Good job, bro. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, I think that was a good show. Yeah, Tom, Keith, y'all have anything for we, for we roll? Well, uh-huh. that was the two B Fest show. Uh, Hold on, stop. No, these at least Tom. Tom got to get off a, a year in review. He said you gotta give us something, Tom. You gotta give us something, <laughs> bro. bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you a voice. My bad. I, I ain't gonna front. Man. My bad. We, 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 this, that was a fire ending. But Tom, I, I want to make sure you you gotta give a little vulnerable piece to you. We out um, here giving a little. Come on, Tom. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't really feel like my year over. Like I don't know this. Like normally at the end of the year, I'm like usually like wrapping up stuff. I kind of got an idea of where I'm going to next. Um, this year in is a little bit different. Just a lot been going on, so it's 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 like I'm. I'm in like a lot of different places. I think the main thing though, like this year, I definitely got more adamant about what I stand on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say if anything, next year, what I'm looking forward to is actually stepping out more. So I really got a problem like being in the forefront or, but it's like, yeah, I, I like I just sit in the background and I play it safe. I've been doing that a long time. So I, I, I'm looking forward to just not doing that anymore. Step I want to be better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, of course, this podcast. I'm looking forward to season two. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Season two. I like being in the producer's chair. Yeah. <laughs> this is it. Like I'm looking Producer forward to season tone. two, man. Like we got some good things coming. Yeah. So yeah, you know. Oh yeah, y'all be on the lookout for season two. 
like, comment, subscribe below, hit the notification button, uh, follow us on Facebook at the To Be Fair Show, follow us on Instagram at the To Be Fair Show. I'm your host Johnny P. Oh, here real. It's Q, and we out.